Hey everybody, today I'm going to show you the absolute easiest way to prepare your rye berry grain spawn jars. And as you can see in the background, I'm doing a jar now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I prepare the jar to go into the pressure cooker. And then when it's done, I'll take that jar out of the pressure cooker and show you how they turn out. It's very easy. What I used to do is I used to soak my grain overnight and then I would boil it for so many minutes until the grains got translucent and then lay it out and let it dry a little bit and put it in jars and then pressure cook it for a couple hours. Waste of time. Wait till you see this. You're going to love it. And here's everything we're going to need uh, to make our grain spawn jars. I use the wide mouth jars because once the grain colonizes, it's easier to get them out of there. Sometimes that stuff is hard to break up and get out of the jars once it gets fully colonized. Here's my lid. Just drilled the hole and I sealed that with poly uh, micropore tape so it can breathe, but no contaminants can get in. I have one cup of rye berries. I use organic food grade rye berries. Actually, I'm not sure if you can eat rye berries. Anyway, organic rye berries, they're very clean, so there's very little dust in there. So you don't have to worry about rinsing them. And two thirds of a cup of water. We just take our rye berries. Let's see if I can do this while I'm filming and not spill. Oh, that's a really nice mess. All right, live on camera. Yes, I make mistakes. I will be right back after I clean this up. Okay, got my mess cleaned up. Got all my rye berries in the jar. Now you just add two thirds of a cup of water. And if you want to, you can add a a little bit of gypsum in there, like an eighth of a teaspoon, maybe even a quarter of a teaspoon. But I don't do that. I don't feel it's necessary. Uh, you might want to do that if your grain is a little bit dirty and you don't feel like rinsing it so it doesn't stick together when you PC it. And what I like to do is I like to mix it up a little bit. So we just give it a little mix. I don't know if this does anything. It makes me feel better. I like to make sure that none of the grain is up alongside the jar. It's all down at the bottom. Okay. Just throw a lid on it. And then I like to put foil over it, that way no water gets inside your jar that's not supposed to be there. I just get a piece of foil. Of course it doesn't have to be this big. This was just handy. And then you stick that in your pressure cooker and you pressure cook at 15 PSI for two hours. And then uh, as soon as that jar that's done in the, in the PC right now, I'll take that out and I'll show you how they turn out. I'll be right back. All right, so there's our timer. Our two hours are up. Just shut the timer off. And just shut the stove off. And let that decompress. And depressurize. And once it gets depressurized, I'll go ahead and take the jar out and uh, show you how it looks. And while you're waiting for your pressure cooker to depressurize, have a snack and dance. Oh, 
Mmm, that's good. Homemade chocolate zucchini bread. Who two veggies could be so good? Mmm. Ah. Mmm. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm talking about right there. Let's see what we got here. I always wear oven mitts. It's very, very hot. And always be careful of steam, too. Okay. Put that off to the side. Bring it over here. Alright. It's important at this phase to give it a good shake. Because you'll see at the bottom some of the grains will clump up a little bit. So just A little bit of gypsum got stuck on the bottom. That's no big deal. And there you go. Perfectly hydrated and ready to go. Once it cools off, you can inoculate it any way you choose. And you've got grain spawn. Easiest way possible. No soaking, no boiling, no laying it out to dry. Saves a huge amount of time. Just huge. Thanks for watching and please subscribe.